Welcome back. Forget the cash or the plastic. Now your payment option is right at your fingertips. Literally, customers at the Cost Cutter Supermarket at London's uh, Brunel University are the first in the world to pay for their groceries with finger vein scanners, developed by technology firm Staller. Joining us right now is the CEO of Staller, Nick Dryden. Nick, good to see you. Thanks very much for joining us. Congratulations on this. Explain how the technology works. Hi, good morning. Uh, yeah, the technology works quite simply. We use near-infrared light, which uh, scans your finger. Your hemoglobin absorbs infrared, and we get a very clear pattern of your vein structure. So much so that we can get one and a half thousand uh, point map reference from your finger. So it's a very, very strong biometric. Uh, hey, this is uh, Jason Chaffetz. Uh, interesting technology. Why is it better than, say, maybe a retinal scan? Uh, here in the United States, I signed up for Clear. Uh, when you go through the airport, they take a scan of my eyeballs, and I can go. I don't have to touch anything. Why? Why do you think this is better than doing a retinal scan? Uh, so we're kind of dealing with points of sale and gates to get into places like football stadiums and festivals. And it comes down to cost versus speed versus usability. Uh, with this biometric, the devices are relatively inexpensive. Uh, compared to retinal scan, it's massively cheaper. Um, it's very practical. People don't mind using their fingers. Some people have an issue using biometrics full stop, but definitely more so if it's a retinal scan. But I think because we're cheap, we can do a cloud, and we can do a cloud match within... So we're matching in the cloud, and we can do a cloud match within 200 milliseconds. Uh, which I think is a little bit more difficult with, with retinal. Well, are there any health risks to any of this? I mean, whether it's a retinal scan or y y your veins in your finger, what, what are the, the health risks? Um, well, this is a medical piece of technology anyway. I don't think there's any health risks. Um, infrared is present in the sunlight. So um, this device made by Hitachi uh, was used to spot the early signs of heart disease. Uh, it can also spot the early signs of diabetes. So it's a, it's a very well-made piece of kit. It's, it's been in the industry for years, but as medical, not, uh, not in any way to link to point of sale. Nick, how do you get customers comfortable with this? I mean, I have to admit, when I read this and then thinking about doing it, it, it just seems a little too sci-fi, maybe just a little bit too weird. Do you ha is there a kind of a break-in period for customers here, or are people just very willing to go through this? Well, it's a good question. Uh, we've been testing this since 2012 uh, in music festivals, you know, it's just so we could uh, introduce a cashless system. Um, people are kind of wary of biometrics. Um, I don't know if it's the same in uh, America, but in Europe, um, we, fingerprint and DNA has always been used against us. It's always been synonymous with crime. So I think people have got to get over that step. But I think when they realise that what we, we, we actually... When we make a little crypto key from, from your finger vein pattern, that is completely anonymous in our database. Um, so if anybody ever gets in there, there's nothing that they can actually find that they can reuse. Um, so a lot of education has to go with this kind of technology so that people understand how safe it is, uh, how accurate it is, and how quick it is to identify you. Because you know, all you need is you. You don't need to carry anything. Uh, you know, Lots of other kind of biometrics are linked to devices that we need to take with us. So if we lose them, we lose the ability to identify ourselves. Nick, are you so, yeah, coming to... So, yeah, I think to... it's down to education. We need to talk to people. Yeah. Are you coming to the U.S.? Any businesses here using the technology? We're coming to the U.S. in October. We're going to be at Money 2020. Uh, please come and see us there. Fingo Pay. Um, there's a lot of U.S. businesses talking to us already, and we'll start the conversations uh, next month. Nick, hi, Jason Chaffetz again. Again, explain the difference between a finger vein versus a fingerprint. You know, you go on your Apple phone and I can unlock it with just uh, my fingerprint. Uh, why is this better is it, uh, and is it more secure? So with fingerprint, Jason, we tend to uh, find it doesn't work. It's less reliable. If your hands are wet or dirty or slightly sweaty, you tend to find that that will not work. And we can't take that chance. Um, fingerprint also is latent, so I can leave it on a glass, I can leave it, you know, everywhere I touch, I'll leave a fingerprint. So it's probably one of the easiest to acquire biometrics known to man. I mean, the science of acquiring a fingerprint has just been around for about 30 years. This is internal, it's a 3D biometric of the inside of my finger, you're never going to get it off me without my knowledge. All right, we will leave it there. <laughs>